We are standing on the steps of Old City Hall, and we're going to do a little bit of a different tour today. We are taking Harry Sanders' book from 2005, The Historic Walks of Calgary, and we're going to follow along and do the Civic Center and Stephen Avenue walk, and his tour starts on the steps of City Hall, and so does ours. Let's go! Roll the opening, Mabel! Construction on what today is known as Old City Hall started in 1907, but like a lot of government projects, budget problems caused it to be delayed and it didn't open until 1911. This sandstone beauty was built just steps away from Calgary's original town hall, which had been constructed in 1885. A replica of that building stands today at Heritage Park, and this is about where it would have been located originally. Sandstone City Hall would serve its purpose up until 1985, when it was mainly replaced by the Calgary Municipal Building seen here in the background. And here's a look at that 1907 cornerstone, a full four years before the building opened in 1911. So if anyone has an in with the city and could get me access to the clock tower, I would be forever in your debt. I've always wanted to get inside that clock tower. And taking a closer look at the coat of arms above the door, this is a neat tidbit from Harry's book. You'll see there are two dates inscribed there, 1882 and 1894. 1882 representing Calgary's incorporation as a town, and 1894 representing its incorporation as a city. The trick is, Calgary was incorporated as a town in 1884, not 1882. They didn't catch that mistake at the time. It is not the greatest day here in Calgary. Uh, we are experiencing those classic April showers, which bring May flowers, except in Calgary, the April showers come in the form of snow, and they just tend to bring more snow in May. But behind me is the Burns Block, which is our next stop on the Harry Sanders tour. Built by rancher and cattle baron Patrick Burns. The Burns building was originally designed in 1911 with construction beginning in 1912. Upon its completion in 1913, the original design of two stories had been expanded to the current six. I really enjoy the small details such as these lion figures with the chains coming out of their mouths supporting that canopy above the ground floor. The building was at risk of demolition in the late 70s and was saved by a single vote during a city council meeting in 1980. Other original details that still survive are the two separate entrances, one marked market and one marked office. No visit downtown would be complete without taking a quick look at Olympic Plaza, built for the 1988 Winter Olympic Games. Now as we take one last look at the Burns buildings, we're going to come across the Calgary Performing Arts Center, now known as the Arts Commons. It's gone by a lot of different names over the years. But I want to just take a moment and remember some of the people and businesses that used to occupy this space prior to its construction here in the 1980s. 
Calgary always has a reputation for reinventing itself, and this area looked a lot different 40-plus years ago. Bookending the Performing Arts Center is the Calgary Public Building from 1931. Originally, the first three floors were dedicated to the post office. The top five uh, housed military and government offices. Today, its main floor forms the lobby of the Jack Singer Concert Hall. Situated straight north of the Calgary Public Building is the Dominion Bank Building, which was built in 1912. Dominion Bank would merge with the Bank of Toronto in the 1950s, forming Toronto Dominion, or TD Bank, as we know it today. They would occupy the building up until 1986. In 1994, Teatro Restaurant moved in, and they occupy the site to this day. So here's a look at the east-facing side of the Calgary Public Building. As you can see, it's undergoing some renovations currently. And, as I said, just to the north of it is the Dominion Bank Building. That fourth floor with the glass roof was an addition in the late 1980s and is obviously not original to the architecture of the period. So we're continuing our tour westward now, and we've crossed over the southbound lanes of McLeod Trail to look at this series of buildings. Now, it looks like a series of historical buildings, and at one point it was, but this is actually the north building of the Calgary Convention Center. And unfortunately, most of these buildings now are just facades. The actual buildings themselves were demolished. But let's start with the Nielsen block. Hugh Nielsen ran the Nielsen Furniture Company and originally constructed this shop in 1903. You can see the difference. The first three floors are part of the original 1903 uh, construction, and then in 1910 he added two more stories, hence the two dates on the building. Next up is the 1907 L.H. Dahl Building. Lewis Henry Dahl operated a jewelry store here uh, for a brief period of time after the building was built. Uh, within a year of moving in, his daughter died of scarlet fever and he lost interest in the jewelry business and sold out to his apprentice David Black. It was during Black's time operating in the building that his jewelry store became the target of one of the largest robberies in Calgary's history. In 1910, according to Harry's book, 1911 in another source I found, the store was robbed of $10,000 worth of gems, the equivalent of almost a quarter of a million dollars today, and the thief was never caught. One of the oldest facades in this section still remaining is from 1893, the Thompson Brothers block, built by brothers James and Melville Thompson. Today the main floor hosts Thompson's Restaurant, part of the Hyatt Regency chain that is where the building has been incorporated into. The upper apartments that used to exist here are the site of a very famous attempted murder in Calgary's history, but maybe that's a subject for a future video. Now, believe it or not, these next two buildings originally used to look identical, and they date back to 1886, the year of Calgary's Great Fire, and both were under construction at that time. 
The buildings underwent extensive renovations and additions in 1907 and 1909, but prior to that, they actually were identical to each other and shared a common wall. Now, this is an image of the intersection I'm currently standing at, circa 1911. This is looking south towards the Canadian Pacific Railway Station, which was demolished in the 1960s. While it's not officially part of the tour, I thought highlighting the train station was important because that location, after it was demolished, eventually became this. Yes, Calgary's iconic Calgary Tower, originally named the Husky Tower when it opened in 1968, stands at the location of the original CP Rail train station. So we lost one icon, but we gained another. I guess that has to count as a fair trade. Now let's turn around and look at the Hudson Bay building. Now, the eastern half of this building was built in 1890, and then it was doubled in size in 1895. In 1913, the Bay had outgrown these premises and sold them to the Royal Bank of Canada when the Bay moved into its much larger store just west of this location. And sometimes it pays to get off the tour a little bit and check out the back alleys where there's always some interesting things to see. I mean, check out this classic fire escape <laughs> on the rear of this building. And this super colorful mural which stands in stark contrast to all the sandstone surrounding it. This pioneer market sign dates from 1908 to 1920 when Senator Patrick Burns was running his meat market out of this building. I'll talk more about that when we get to the front. I mean, Calgary is a really safe city, so I have zero concerns about getting into kind of some of these grittier parts of downtown. It's quite interesting. Back out front now, and our next stop here is the Lougheed Block, or also known as the Ward Block. The three-story building on the left was originally built to house the Great Western Saddlery. However, from 1912 to 1932, Tom Campbell operated his famous hat shop out of this location. The shorter two-story building was originally built to house a branch of the Union Bank of Canada, and the branch manager would actually live in the apartment upstairs above the bank. Today it's home to an original Joe's, but it was originally built in 1889 as the McNaughton Block and was home to a number of businesses over the years. This two-story sandstone and brick structure was built in 1889 by John Lynham. Lynham's probably most famous for becoming the first mayor of Okotoks and for the Lynham sawmills. In 1923, this was home of the Club Cafe and cowboy Eddie King rode his horse through the cafe, establishing a stampede tradition. 
this three-story building was actually built in 1891 and housed Ashdown Hardware from the time it opened right through until 1971. Most people know John Molson as a brewer, but they also were a family that founded a bank back in 1855, hence the 1855 date on the building behind me. The 1912 on the other side represents the year the building was constructed. The Tribune Block was built by Thomas Braden in 1892 and became the home of Calgary's morning newspaper, the Calgary Tribune, which originally debuted in 1885. The Tribune would eventually merge with the Albertan, which would eventually become today's Calgary Sun. If not for all those modern skyscrapers in the background, it wouldn't be hard to picture this block as coming straight out of the early 20th century. Now we have two adjacent buildings here, both built in 1903. And if you remember a few minutes ago, I showed you that Pioneer Market sign that was in the back alley. Well, this is the front of that building, and it was the home of Pat Burns uh, Pioneer Market Meat Shop from 1908 through 1920, with that sign in the back dating from that era and that period of usage. Originally built in 1893 to house the Criterion Restaurant, the building was expanded and had its sandstone facade added in 1903 when it was purchased by the Merchants Bank of Canada, which operated up until 1914 from this location. Today, it's a cannabis shop. Also dating from 1893, this was the original home of Jacques Jewelry Shop. However, from 1909 to 1974, it was home of the Calgary Shoe Hospital. At one time along 8th Avenue, there were four buildings named for the sons of James Lougheed. Today only two le are left. They're behind me, the Clarence Block and the Norman Block. This Clarence Block dates to 1901, replacing the original Clarence Block on this site, which was destroyed by fire the year previously. The same fire that destroyed the Clarence Block also caused damage to the Norman Block, which had been opened just a few weeks earlier. Lougheed rebuilt it in 1901 and it opened again. It would be damaged by fire again in 1908 and then completely gutted by fire in 1933 and was rebuilt within its existing walls. When I first moved to Calgary in the early 1990s, the imposing Bank of Montreal building behind me was an A and B sound. And it was very common for us as university students to, on the weekends, catch the C train, come downtown, and go buy CDs at A and B sound. Good memories inside that building. It's a good life fitness now. Uh, not obviously the sort of place where I've been much uh, since it's changed. Speaking of banks, we have the 1930 Art Deco style Bank of Nova Scotia, a building they would occupy right up until 1976. Today it's home of the Bank and Baron pub, and I remember coming here in the early 1990s when it was the Bank Nightclub.
This here is the oldest remaining building in downtown Calgary. Having survived the Great Fire of 1886, it was built in 1885. From 1893 through 1901, Daniel Webster Marsh owned and operated a general mercantile store out of this location. Marsh had actually served a term as Calgary's fourth mayor from 1889 through 1890. Pretty neat piece of history, Calgary's oldest building in the downtown core. Looking across the street to the Alberta block, built by William Roper Hull, 1903 to house his business interests and serve as a revenue property. In that corner storefront is where Jimmy Condon owned and operated Jimmy's Cafe from 1934 to 1948 and local legend is that's where the first ever milkshakes in Calgary were served. So the Harry Sanders tour continues further to the west down Stephen Avenue. This is all we're going to have time for today. So I'm going to put an end to the tour here. Uh, thank you very much for coming along and joining us. And thank you very much, Harry Sanders, for publishing the book and for all the work you do in preserving Calgary's history. Harry is a great guy. I've had the chance to meet and talk with him a couple of different times over the years. Fantastic resource, second to none when it comes to Calgary history. And uh, yeah, it's a great book. If you get a chance, find a used copy somewhere, pick it up, do the tour. And if not, maybe I'll do a few more of these as we go along. Thanks for watching. All right. <coughs> oh, of course. Mm. All right, we are standing on the steps of Old City Hall here in Calgary, and we are doing a... No, hang on. <laughs> okay. You want me to start over? No, just keep it rolling. Okay. <laughs> Behind... Behind me is the... Behind me is the Calgary Municipal... Behind me is the Calgary Municipal Building, built in 1931.